Hello. Uh, thanks. Thank you all for coming. This is uh, uh, this is fun. We do uh, you know here in the, in the with the Western Hemisphere Orchestra we do so many different kinds of music, but uh, but at least uh, at least once a year we really get down to playing some jazz, and that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do tonight for you. So we've taken a uh, really a snapshot with uh, uh, the focus being, being through, through two of the great musicians uh, from the 40s and 50s and, and even on beyond that, Jerry Mulligan and Helen O'Connell. Two very different musicians, but, but two musicians that were definitely associated with cool. And that's what this is. It's cool music, it's cool jazz, it's beatnik jazz, it's beat culture. And so, uh, uh, so you'll hear things that are, that, uh, that are sometimes tongue in cheek, sometimes that are very brainy, very heady, and other times that they just swing like mad. And, uh, and, that's, and that's what cool is all about. So you can't properly have a beatnik show without a real life beatnik poet. And so we have one of those tonight. And so reading, reading in between uh, some of the songs, uh, some of his own poetry and some, some uh, poetry from, from beat poets and all over the place. He's my good friend, a very talented artist, poet, musician, and, uh, and all around fabulous guy, John Van Driel. Thank you, Keller. William Safford's An Oregon Message. When we first moved here, pulled the trees in around us, curled our backs to the wind, no one had ever hit the moon, no one. Now our trees are safer than the stars and only other people's neglect is our precious and abiding shell. Pierced by meteors, radar, and the telephone. From our snug place we shout religiously for attention in order to hide. Only silence or evasion will bring dangerous notice. The hovering hawk of the state. Or the sudden quiet stare and fatal estimate of an alerted neighbor. This message we smuggle out in its plain cover to be opened quietly. Friends everywhere. We are alive. Those moon rockets have missed millions of secret places. Best wishes. Burn this.
Reflections of Smokier Times by John Van Buren. Sammy was a drinker. Hard booze, wine, beer, especially beer. It gave him heart, he said. Two years ago in grief, he quit. Because eventually he knew it made him a loathsome instead. I remember two years ago, Keller's Bar, where Sammy took his last drink. Change was coming. He knew. He knew I knew. He sat sipping, encased within the pub's red interior walls. Walls with bold color, but muted by cigarette smoke from hundreds of bandit players. I like the smoke. It seemed right. It fit still. Change was coming. I watched Sammy sipping that last brew. He watched the beer like a pathetic man stares at a reckless mistress just before he cuts himself free. Then I watched the players. Most were frequent flyers awaiting the big win. Of course, we all pay tribute to that which motivates religion, philosophy, relationships, addictions, behaving as we have been shaped or have shaped ourselves. But the band of players give it form, sitting like Pavlov's own puppies, slobbering at the lights and the bells and the clings, the sounds of promises. Bills paid, vast boats purchased, debt forgiven, rings bought, love bought. They still play those slots at Keller's Bar. The gray smoke and smolder, haze and crud, gone now. The target of our prohibitionist times. The red walls, too bright, too pure, for even a windowless watering hole that must keep its smokers caged outside in the rear. I miss that smoke like Sammy misses beer.
The father of cool is Miles Davis. It's undeniable. The, uh, the, the whole music movement of cool was started with, uh, with a, a band in a basement apartment in New York that, that young Miles Davis put together. And just recently, some of those arrangements, actually all of those arrangements, have, uh, have been made available to the public, and that was one of them. We'll, uh, we'll play a couple more of them later. But that's, uh, this, this uh, yeah, cool was born in a, in really in this, in this basement in New York, and then forgotten for several years. The musicians that, that made, uh, made those recordings, they weren't released at the time, but the musicians, after they made those records, they went out and started playing in other bands and, and teaching the, making the cool school happen. And so uh, uh, Jerry Mulligan was the baritone saxophone player and wrote several of those tunes, including the one you just heard, Deception. On the other side of things, well, we've got all these beautiful, heady undercurrents happening. American popular music was pre-rock and roll. People were singing songs. They were singing lots of songs. And one of the absolute best was Helen O'Connell. And uh, so we have... Uh, um, Two, two incredible singers tonight to, to, to pay tribute to Helen O'Connell. And so please welcome the, the first of those two, Domaris Escobar. It's going to be Brazil, one of the most famous uh, Brazilian songs that hit America. So enjoy. Thank you. 
Marie's Escobar. Allen Ginsberg's An Eastern Ballad. I speak of love that comes to mind. The moon is faithful, although blind. She moves in thought, she cannot speak. Perfect care has made her bleak. I never dreamed the sea so deep, the earth so dark, so long my sleep. I have become another child. I wake to see the world go wild.
The Impression by John Vanville. This is how it starts. Over almond-shaped white fields with cerulean pools and deep, inky black wells at the center, her powder-soft, fleshy curtains blink in slight exaggeration to express her point. All while she turns and tips her brow. My way, a quick stare. Sometimes a, a turned up corner of her otherwise temperate mouth, a grin, sometimes not, always a slight blush. I pause, adjusting the effect and drinking in, I still the glance, just to save it for later, again.
the, the first time we played that, I, I, had, I had not heard that piece before. It's one of the first arrangements that Jerry Mulligan ever did. He wrote it for when he got a, a job early on in his career with the Gene Krupa band. So old school swing. Gene Krupa was Benny Goodman's drummer, for those of you who don't know who Gene Krupa is, and if you don't know who Benny Goodman is, go check it out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the first time we read that, and those trumpets at the end, you know, I was like, wow, was he trying to get fired? <laughs> It's beautiful, though. Uh, we got one more for you this half. Uh, Jerry Mulligan Tooney wrote this when he was uh, working with the Stan Kenton band. This is called Limelight. Tom Waits, what's he building?
What's he building in there? What the hell is he building in there? He has subscriptions to those magazines. He never waves when he goes by. He's hiding something from the rest of us. He's all to himself. I think I know why. He took down the tire swing from the pepper tree. He has no children of his own, you see. He has no dog, and he has no friends. And his lawn is dying. And what about all those packages he sends? What's he building in there? With that hook light on the stairs, what's he building in there? I'll tell you one thing, he's not building a playhouse for the children. What's he building in there? Now what's that sound from under the door? He's pounding nails into a hard wood, wood floor. And I swear to God, I heard someone moaning low. And I keep seeing the blue light of a TV show. He has a router and a table saw. And you won't believe what Mr. Sticka saw. There's poison under this sink, of course. But there's also enough formaldehyde to choke a horse. What's he building in there? What the hell is he building in there? I heard he has an ex-wife in some place called Mayor's Income, Tennessee. And he used to have a consulting business in Indonesia. But what's he building in there? What the hell is he building in there? He has no friends, but he gets a lot of mail. I'll bet he spent a little time in jail. I heard he was up on the roof last night, signaling with a flashlight. And what's that tune he's always whistling? What's he building in there? What's he building in there? We have a right to know.
Steel and Sweet Bee by John Banville. Open mic at the Triangle Inn, several beers deep, and I'm in good company. Watching the musicians as they watch each other, some eager, some nervous, a few appearing disinterested. There's Theo with his lady. She's smiling. They speak to each other with side glances and slightly tilted, slightly turned heads while watching the performers. Theo also eyes the door. Music, sound, more sound, a guitar cover tune, something by Towns Van Zant. Sweet Bee walks in, past me, sits at the back of the bar, hoists her guitar case onto a neighboring stool. More sound, guitar, and harmonica on two Warren Zevon covers. Theo's lady stands, nods to a few friends, leaves with keys in hand. Sound, take me to the river, but old school, not like the talking heads covered it. I don't know who wrote that one. B moves to Theo's table. There's top, clearly something in common. They could be related, old friends, colleagues. Next, Dan, friends of mine. Their first is an original. Gets nods, smiles, and even some gestures of enthusiasm. Theo walks past out the door. Next two songs are originals, too. Engaging the small crowd, folks stop talking. Sweet B pays her tab, moves quickly to the door. Guitar case in hand, disappears. My friends wrap up with a cover of All the Young Dudes. I'm ready to leave, then the new band starts a Dylan cover. I can't leave during Dylan, I do right after. Thought Theo was with that other lady, the first one, the one who left his table before he was joined by Sweet P. But in the parking lot, I caught a glimpse of B um, and Theo in a car. Movement, some steam on windows. My assumption, well, you know, then again, it was cold, and I think they were smoking some boo. And just exactly what does B have in that guitar case?
Thank you. Uh, please, another round of applause for all the people in the non -net. That is, uh, that's some serious music for them to take on. I'm so glad they were willing. We have, uh, we have a couple more Helen O'Connell tunes for you. Uh, a couple of uh, beautiful tunes. Please welcome to the stage, Aaron Westfall. One more tune to sing for you, and it's the only Burt Bacharach song Helen O'Connell sang. They 
Obsidian by John Van Drill. Three or so years in ghoul time, a soul indulged in crimson wine, standing where I once heard angels slang, finding smiles, tears, pleasure, pain. Seeing them, those ghouls, just short of clear sight, smoky, opaque, blurred in muted light. As if through black obsidian sliced smooth and thin, I watch movements of life, angst, and tentative sin. Is in such hours of awkward tone where I search the form and stand alone, then note the hesitation of my tired art, and oddly enough, I find my heart.
And finally, Allen Ginsberg's first party at Ken Kesey's with Hell's Angels. Cool black night through redwoods. Cars parked outside in shade. Behind the gate, stars dim above the ravine. A fire burning by the side porch and a few tired souls hunched over in black leather jackets. In the huge wooden house, a yellow chandelier. At 3 a.m., the blast of loudspeakers. High five, high five, Rolling Stones, Ray Charles, Beatles, Jumping Joe Jackson, and 20 youths dancing to the vibration through the floor. A little weed in the bathroom. Girls in scarlet tights. One muscular, smooth-skinned man sweating, dancing for hours. Beer cans bent, littering the yard. A hanged man sculpture dangling from a high creek branch. Children sleeping softly in their bedroom bunks. And four police cars parked outside the painted gate, red lights revolving in the leaves. December 1965. Thank you so much. We've got one more to do f for you. This is, but this has been so much fun. Thanks uh, to John, Johnny Vandriel, who uh, came out to help us out tonight. It's a blast. And a hand for all the great soloists tonight. Uh, there was so much work, so much on the shoulders of the soloists. Actually, I don't think Lewis. I don't think you actually bowed once after a solo. So you got to take a bow right now. Take a bow. Yeah. That's right. So good. Uh, look, this is, uh, this is really uh, uh, part one of a, of a, a two-night uh, string of shows.
because in this very hall tomorrow night, the Western Hemisphere Voices are performing, and they are doing one of the great, it's really hard to describe the record, I mean, it's called Modern Sounds in Country and Western, but it's also one of the great records of all time. Any, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just the strangest, most hard-swinging, beautiful record. Uh, so it's, it's all Ray Charles, uh, and, uh, and half the tunes sound like those beautiful, you know, Hollywood voices, you know, from movies, Heavenly, and then the other half are just hard, hard swinging big band. And we've got the American Metropole Orchestra big band here, backing them up, and so it's going to be another big swinging night tomorrow. So uh, coming back out at 7.30 to see the Western Hemisphere voices do that record. And thanks, of course, to my assistant director and partner in crime and most things, Bugbear, uh, for uh, uh, taking, taking care of the band and doing all the extra part writing for the woodwinds. All right, so uh, let's, uh, we'll, do, we'll finish with a, with a big Helen O'Connell number. And oh yeah, by the way, the auditions for the vocalists, it was the hardest auditions ever. At, uh, uh, I've ever had to go through here. There were six vocalists that showed up to audition for these Helen O'Connell tunes, and any of them would have done a great job. It was incredible. I mean, I had to keep bringing them back to audition more and more, just waiting for somebody to make any kind of mistake, and nobody ever did. So it, it's, been, it's been so much fun for me to work with both of these singers. And so, uh, yeah, both uh, Aaron Westfall and Domri Saskabar, a big hand for them. Yeah. And so, welcome back, Don Marie Suscobar. Right up your sleeve, fooling with me. Life is worth living while you are giving moments of paradise. And you're such a standout, but how you hand out that hocus pocus from your eyes. I got a feeling you're fooling. I got a feeling it's all a frame. And then it's well, army game, fooling with me. With living while you are giving moments of paradise. You're such a standout, but I you hand out that hocus pocus from your eyes. I got a feeling you're fooling. I got a feeling it's all a frame. It's just a well known old army game of fooling. Fooling with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming out. It was a blast. We'll see you again next term.